。えー、それではですね、えー、本日の第二セッション、えー、神話と芸術が開く未来のフォークロアの、えー、方に移っていければと思います。はい。で、えー、このセッションはですね、ありがとうございます。Kind of、uh, art and mythology and art. We would like to look at the kind of、uh, today's meaning of、uh, folklore and、uh, traditional animism. So let me introduce. So, Shikura san、uh, travels broadly and、uh, studies in India and、uh, South America, and、uh, he、uh, compared. Uh, uh, A、uh, goat of the mountain, and uh, he uh, induced an、uh, uh, interaction of a、uh, co different、uh, body. And、uh, we can、uh, really listen, i n g we are looking forward to listening to. And Antoine using a、uh, field recording science and data to create an、uh, audio experience relating to the life. And he explored that field. He's going to introduce his visual and the audio or,、uh, work、uh, with you today. So please, looking forward to it. So, we'd like to ask you to start t a l k、uh, first, Ishikura san, please. Thank you very much.、Uh, I'm Ishikura.、Uh, today's first session.、Uh, thank you very much for giving us the opportunity for this、uh, really inspiring session. s The first session was really new and、uh, novel to me. And I'd like to share my screen with you when I talk with you. So,、uh, alternative mythology for future folklore. And uh, uh, I studied、uh, art and mythology and their relationship. This door is uh, this, uh, this screen is several projects I've been involved in. And also, I'd like to introduce、uh, Okojima san's drawing. Uh, she, she, she's going to appear later. So, let me introduce myself briefly. I was born and grew in Tokyo and learned anthropology in university. About 10 years ago, I went to Akita, the kind of northern part of Japan, and moved there.、Uh, and I'm、uh, teaching at、uh, the university there. When I was 14 years old,、uh, my family took me to the India and Pakistan. And、uh, just like、uh, Okuno sensei kind of mentioned, I also visit a lot of ruins of、uh, Buddhism and Tibetan s Buddhism. And、uh, so I have a chance to encounter culture other than Japan. In our、uh, graduate school, I、uh, studied about、uh, multi study in Himalayan foods. Recently, I do a collaboration with an artist and a, a photographer、uh, and study the multi species anthropology. And、uh, in the multi species uh, uh, kind of,、uh, anthropology, people don't take good at the mythology. People talk bad about mythology there. You know, so, but I, I want to inquire,、uh, explore the possibility of myth mythology. What is mythology? 
Originally, uh, I think mythology is uh, not just a story, but uh, I think uh, mythology is more than that. For example, uh, mythology contains cosmologies that speaks the order of the cosmos. And uh, there is a world we actually live in, and also a kind of world of the meaning woven in the actual world. So there is some connection between uh, uh, mythology has a function to connect the real world and the stories. So, you know, there's a, a cultural order and uh, there is another thing like a called a uh, chaos and the uh, uh, mythology is to function as how to connect them and take a balance and ecology. And uh, uh, there's a connection. How to me uh, mitigate the two cycles, real world and the uh, uh, human-made meaning world, the uh, mythology can connect two worlds. And uh, the two uh, artists in the modern age also uh, work as a mediator. And uh, uh, cosmology, and uh, also uh, they has a, a, a mythology contains cosmology and speaks of cosmos, cosmos from the logos, an intellectual or imagined movement that spaceship it. The background contains all the intellectual uh, capacities of Homo sapiens. And the missile do not confine people to the category of human being, nor do they force them into the framework of the society and culture. Myth tells the history of human and all things living in nature, as well as a mystery history of how species and non-living things began and came to be what they are today. Not only that, but myths do not absolute, absolutize history as we we know it as. And uh, Mrs. Uh, characterized, uh, among other things, by the interweaving a non human species as important actors in Miss Humans. Non human species animals are great uh, significant actors. The great French anthropologist of 20th century, Claude Levi Strauss, once defined Miss story that took place in very ancient times when animals and humans were not yet separated from each other and the areas. Uh, uh, they occupied in the universe were were not yet clearly. This is a very broad definition of myth, myth mythology, and very interesting. So, uh, in you know, children's uh, picture book is in a deeper sense connected to the world of mythos. Uh, indeed, as Levi Strauss notes, uh, mythologies around the world have not considered different species of being, such as animals, as separate from human, but rather as having a light and history equal to that of human. On the contrary, many indigenous mythologies in particular have considered animals as important partner of human, member of a fellowship and transfer, transforms into each other, married each other, and spoke in the same language. Myths are not simply fantasy story, but translate and fold into human language and the perspective of the other creature and non-living things living onto the land. And uh, 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 myths are not only told in words, but also expressed, translated as figurative expressions. Masks on the Northwestern coast in America, for example, are like in interestingly. These masks also closely uh, resemble Japanese masks. Webster said something very interesting. They said a uh, mask doesn't exist as it's on its own. It's always get translated and uh, reshaped. Mask is high. Mask is not hiding uh, its covers, but actually, uh, mask existence of mask always assumes other masks. So mask is is. Uh, a mask is something it's gonna be transformed. Mask is something that's not expressed. So mask is not try to express something. Mask is try to transform into something. Same thing can be said in uh, mythology because mythology myth doesn't exist on its own. It's always exist in other relationships, others and create transformation.
はい。So, Japanese artist and the Korean artist, I had a chance to、uh, talk about the myths and the rest. Our tentative result is、uh, unless we know other people's myths, we cannot understand other people's uh, uh, history. You know, we could be, we call, we call, call own the,、um, uh, the myths and the history、uh, over the cross border and、uh, connect and transform them. That's going to be create, you know, we are in the era of the we think, global crossover myth. Not only、uh, a visual and uh, uh, the myths transcend the image of the human and open passage between different beings. The contemporary philosopher Emil Kosha argues that the human existence is planetary scale use of atoms with all the matter and the organism that exist before us, forming the spirit and body of the individual, though. Uh, through uh, reproduction of the birth. Miss Robbery tries to tell the same story using a narrative form that lies something between animism and uh, sci uh, scientific thinking. And this is a,、uh, Dr. Kosher, I think, is the best,、uh, the greatest philosopher in the in a modern age. Yeah,、uh, uh, stay in Japan right now. As,、uh, so、as we explained,、uh, yeah, suffering was the transformation of the animal human image. Whereby humans and animals all combine to create a hybrid image of both. Many of them have a solid narrative context. For example, the Holy Kijilis painting transformed the image of the animal. And in Japan, as Okuno says, that as you see, that this is the、um, The picture of the animal that、um, existing animal and a non existing animal, which is、uh, uh, human and animal got together and explain, express something more than the, the animal or the human. And then People have the ancient soul and the animal's soul, they equally、uh, worship and、uh, food. 
the people eat or anything that they um, respect, which is And this is not just uh, Japan, but also the artists in overseas also have the uh, idea that a company and uh, artist, which is uh, creating the head of the uh, animal and having this mask. And uh, this is the uh, um, harmony of the human being and in uh, nature and in animal. It's not just a beautiful thing, but uh, also the Kambani um, is a um, Cambodian uh, dam resisting to the uh, development. And this is the uh, kind of scene of the uh, damaging the nature. And then so they resist to this uh, uh, further development. So this uh, artistic uh, expression is is a, a kind of a different shape of the animism, not just a beautiful, but actual shape of the animism. And also, the Japanese uh, artist Okojima-san, she is uh, including the human and no human. No human. And this is the uh, actually the exhibition in Chiba. And this is a chimera that uh, human and the animal are uh, combining. And Okojima-san, just like Antoine was on the uh, Tara, and then they have the research of the well, and then they created the Marich Media uh, artworks. So the her artwork was a combined combination of the artwork and science. And Okojima-san's artwork, recent artwork, which is very challenging and then very Kimela style, and they, she accepts the uh, Kimela style in the human society. And then also, this is also the, uh, her work. And then she's uh, using the ceramic as her artwork. So this is like a fish eating bear. So this is opposite kind of power, right? Power balance. These are also the uh, uh, animal and human being got together. So this is the recent kind of artwork in October I did with uh, her. And she invited Mountain as a guest. And as an anthropologist, that I translated the uh, language of the guest members. So guests are mountains, and which is the importance of the um, translation, being a translator of the human being and the nature, the mountain. And that moment that she created a new artwork, which is a drawing, this is the mountain and the embryo got together. And this uh, mountain, uh, mountain, ocean, and kolo, and all these uh, things are invited as a guest members. So she's going to develop all this uh, new project. And this is a metamorphose uh, in Japanese. And this uh, her artworks. Uh, connected to the, uh, the all this uh, nature and a modern human about the cone how first think in his book that he was living uh, all this uh, species in the forest behave as a human but the network spending so many years that uh, developing of the uh, hum uh, the species and then corn as the anthropologist ecology of subs 
つまり事故というのは人間の専用物ではなくて、さまざまな生き物が、We are not just a human. If we lives have their, their own lives, and the Amazon the corn, the corn, in this picture that、uh, um, creating this object, this is the, we present this human being to the, the world. So, this is something happening like a shishi or the read the dance of the、uh, animal. The, this is the scarecrow, is to show that it scared the、uh, animal from a human. And talking about the、uh, future folklore, and the first artist that they collaborated, Takagi Masakatsu, this is the collaboration of the music and our, my research as an anthropologist. And this is not just a concept of mythology, but also the,、uh, based on his. Music that we collected many, many、um, different mythology from all over the world. And I feel like all the artists and musicians work is very close to their mythology in、uh, a different area of the world. So during this、uh, artwork with、uh, Takaki san, which is Homo Chevalo. The, in the mythology, the marriage of the、uh, Japanese girl and the host. And this is the,、uh, based on this picture, the image, the animated film. Animation is the kind of love between human and the animal. The is Esperanzo. In human and then animal. And we've visited, we invite, introduce the uh, uh, mythology of、uh, Tohoku area, northern part of Japan. And the woman married to the host, which is It's not、uh, making the film from the mythology, but this is like、uh, mythology already existed and collaborated in a new way. So,、um, the Homo Chebalo is present together. This is a tradition. So, those mythology and folklore、uh, is actually,、uh, they keep giving inspiration to the art all over the world.、Uh, indigenous Australian artist Emily Aguareri expressed a memory of the beginning of the world as is she lives only in Japan, in the Australia. She has never l i v e So, she,、uh, her mythology is about. Uh, a medium through which she sought to get in touch with the origin of the, what exists and turn it into painting became a part of the series of techniques. And through the、uh, spectacle and the hometown, the Aokawan Emily has repeatedly、uh, depicted the universe、uh, of which humans are part. The work of the vision obtained through the、uh, mental med meditation, which is the same、uh, the translating and representing in the painting the process, world creation that has been going in the uninterrupted since the time of the dreaming time. And、uh, there's a common world creation story expressed in Austrian Aboriginal people, is a myth of the rainbow serpent. In the、uh, old age in Japan, there's an image of uh, 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 
uh, snake, snake and dragon and Middle Ages, the image change you know, of the catfish in Japan, the uh, era, uh, when the catfish moves, uh, uh, earthquake happens. And, uh, but not only they destroy things, the a new economy, because we need to build a house newly. So uh, the earthquake is not only a bad thing, but it's give us uh, that opportunity to update the world. So uh, through those uh, uh, images of the earthquake, we uh, create a, a collaboration in the Cosmo Egg Code, which we presented at Japan Pavilion Exhibition at the 2019 Venetian Biennale. The actually uh, attempts to construct a multi-sensory expression, the crossover different genre, video, music, architecture, and mythology. So this looks like an egg of the uh, a dragon, or a, uh, and we call it, um, it this is an egg of the universe. So we connect uh, it with the mythology that the universe is uh, come from the egg. So if you have a chance to visit the Okinawa Island, you see those uh, tsunami stone, the uh, stone built, brought to here by earthquake and tsunami. And uh, this place became a very holy uh, place for the people, in the local people. Based on that, uh, we put a huge balloon in the Biennale. And when people sit on the balloon, and we put the sensors and uh, so there's uh, involved the architecture of anthropologist and the visual and the kind of sound artist uh, collaborated together so i put the sculpture of the uh, world origin and the opening was attended by many visitors now, this is my first experience to have this kind of thing so uh, not only uh, I do the research and study i create a new uh, sculpture new uh, uh, work this is a part of my work I put this uh, verse uh, in four walls, and uh, there's an uh, inner wall and uh, uh, inside of the building, and uh, we sculpted those uh, letters. So, and then uh, we try to, uh, we try to, uh, I try to represent the directness of energy, such as tsunami and earthquake, and the impact of the historical imprint of the myth. So there is an outside light shining through the ceiling, and we have actually created a myth that is a girl lay 12 eggs in this, in this light. In this sense, the installation is a new myth and function as a device to connect the sea of Okinawa and the sea of Venus. A map of the tsunami stone we uh, surveyed and the characters of the each one are shown on this display stand. So this is an actual blueprint, you know, a connection vertically uh, to the sun and the uh, underground. The music we played here is uh, have a great echo and uh, harmony uh, with my story. So. I, the myth of the uh, girl who lays 12 eggs and the uh, rain reincarnated into the new story by interweaving into the local folklore. I patchwork them into one story. And also the, uh, 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 the art mode. So the same was uh, through the sound by the musical Taro Yasuno, who are recording calls the uh, local red crowns at uh, night, heroines and uh, about those uh, birds, they play the music.
Thank you. So, what I have been talked so far is、uh, I'm happy if, you sh- if we can share that、uh, myth has、uh, several layers. The superficially, it has a layer of fiction, kind of imaginary. It's only imaginary story. But underneath that, there is a cognition, a、uh, framework for the cognitive understanding of the world. That is a second layer. Underneath that, there's some.、Um, Uh, uh, kind of、uh, creative and sub consciousness, which we cannot even imagine. It's going to give us an image of the world which g o beyond species. That is not only the human being, s world, you know,、uh, the, the deeper reality、uh, sense is evoked. Mythology、uh, tells us an inter- interplay between the most ancient earthly material, like rock, earth, winds, fire, and water, and the weather and the dimension of living organisms that relate to each other and evoke over hundreds of Millions of years of history and humans who have greatly modified our present planet and face major challenges. Miss will telling those interwoven relationships the, the artist. And uh, uh, experiment, experimentation by the anthropologist will be deeply connected and will like,、uh, continue to create those works. So I use the word uh, uh, in co different body. And、uh, also, he developed that idea to the、uh, physical bodiness. As Kocha said, our body is. Is、uh, given the patchwork connected p r e c u r a g e of the atoms of the present, 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 the other animals and living humans. So we are patchwork, result of that. So our body is all kind of patchwork of different things. At the same time, You know, other species on this earth, you know, we exist together. So it's not just a community. Like we don't, we cannot define the reality with human community because all the other species can exist in the same thing. So that we, what we call heterogeneity. The、uh, myth is told in that. And our body, a co different body, is interwoven with that to create a new, new folklore for the future. That is not close to the human being only. Thank you very much.、Uh, this is the,、uh, our exhibition that、uh, this is actually the, the birds laid、uh, the eggs. And I, I was unbelievable, but this is a very, very good、uh, example that we are connected. The, thank you so much, Ishikura san. Very, very interesting talk. And、uh, during the dialogue, I would like to、uh, listen more deeply what you have been doing. And before that, I would like to introduce、uh, Antoine. Antoine, thank you. So, if you're ready, please. きっとアントワンさん、今、また入り直してくださっているかもしれないので、少し、シクラさんのお話の、お待ちしている間に、シクラさんのお話の、について、はい、まあ、ちょっと、We are、uh, while waiting for him to come back,、はい、we can、we can talk, About something, your presentation was so interesting. And then、um, after the first session, the, as Ishikura san, the collaboration 
of the artwork. And as a mediator, the translator of the art in the science. So I would like to listen to what is. Okay, I'm very sorry about the. Uh, it's the, the magic of technology. <laughs> uh, okay. so sorry, I will start now. <laughs> Please. Um, so, okay, a little bit of sound. So I was saying, uh, yes, I'm really happy to be here um, and that you can hear me now. I'm also happy about this. Um, and so, I'm an artist, and for the next uh, 20 minutes or so, um, I would like to tell you about how an initial interest for aquariums uh, evolved into uh, me trying to become a musician. And uh, before I, I decided to study a little bit of science and eventually uh, decided to work uh, as an artist. Um, so let's go. Um, I remember um, the exact moment when I first uh, became fascinated by the living world, and I invite you to do the same. Uh, it was not in a primary forest. It was not uh, under the sea. Uh, it was simply in an apartment uh, in front of uh, one of my friend's aquarium. Uh, I remember the low frequency drone uh, of the filtration equipment of the aquarium. Um, and how this sound weaves gently with the colors of the tropical fish and uh, the gentle oscillations of the plants. Um, I was 10 years old at the time. And um, at that time, I knew by heart, I remember uh, by heart, the, the brands of cars in the streets. Uh, I remember that they were more numerous and more diverse uh, in my world in Paris uh, than trees for example. But I don't think I'm alone in this, uh, in this situation. Um, and so I would like to do a quick test. Maybe you can uh, uh, tell me in the chat uh, the answers to that test. Uh, how many of you uh, can name all the name of these brands, these brand logo? And now how many of you can name all these pieces of plants? So I hope some of you might know more plants than logos, but unfortunately, I think for a lot of people like me, we are in a, in a, in a context where uh, we are very accustomed to, to human inputs and not so much to the natural world as, a, as we know. And so my friend Aquarium um, was an invitation to observe fabulous animals, uh, to dream about weaving relationship with them. Uh, and when I had an aquarium at home myself, uh, I spent days literally observing the movement of its uh, inhabitants. Uh, shortly afterwards, uh, my parents took me to the uh, public aquarium in Paris. And you can perhaps imagine how surprised I was when I uh, discovered that in this public aquarium, uh, which houses uh, aquatic species from all over the world, uh, there was also a fish restaurant in the same building. It's our relationship with living beings uh, that must evolve, as the previous speakers as have, have explained. Uh, a first reason uh, is that humans won't survive the extension of uh, species that it's only beginning. Um, and that's everybody dying in just a few weeks or a few months or a few years uh, is not enough time to understand the meaning of the universe. Um, another reason, I think, um, to change this relationship is that uh, if we survive the climate crisis that we are already in, uh, the, the universe will not reveal uh, the secrets uh, of what it is only to humans. A reminder of that, uh, perhaps, is that gravity was discovered uh, with the collaboration of, a, of an apple. I would like to present a first, uh, a first piece, a selection of pieces uh, of mine today. Um, in 2018, I collaborated with physicist André Fusfa uh, to create a piece about gravity and what would happen if uh, you or I would fall into a black hole. Uh, black holes, as some of you may know, are a region of the universe where gravity is so strong 
that it bends light uh, and time and eventually our own notion of reality. Uh, this uh, piece, Hearing Gravity, is a 15-minute experience. Uh, it's for one person at a time. Uh, and it's using binaural sound technology to take the visitor on an intimate scientific journey um, be somewhere between uh, auditory illusion and immersive theater. Um, hearing Gravity is an important piece for me because it helped me imagine what could be an interesting role uh, as an artist in uh, in today's context. I realized that I was not so much uh, interested in producing my own composition, uh, sound composition or music composition or my own objects, um, but I was more interested in ho in somehow offering my, my services as a translator between uh, humans and other realities, in this case of Plato. Um, I'll just play a, a short teasing um, um, a video that will show you some of the aesthetics that went into, into this piece. A black hole is one of the strongest points of gravity in the universe. Imagine a trampoline with a heavy rock resting on it, distorting the fabric of the surface. The thing is, it isn't just a deformation of space, but of time as well. The more we listen to gravity, the more we have come to understand gravity is an illusion. <laughs> As I was saying earlier, uh, when referring to how uh, Newton was inspired by an apple to uh, uh, start and understand uh, gravity. I think if humans can uh, pretend to understand anything today, uh, it is thanks to other species. Uh, it's not only apples, uh, it's the intelligence, uh, for example, of an algae uh, that produces oxygen from sunlight, allowing us to breathe. While we are still struggling as, humal to, as humans to uh, deploy renewable energy technology, it's the deep uh, knowledge um, of water that clams uh, uh, have that uh, help uh, us to uh, monitor the uh, pollution in rivers. Uh, I'm referring to a story that I stumbled upon in a newspaper about the city in uh, Poland where uh, clams are used to uh, um, 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 protect inhabitants from the pollution of their water. Uh, clams will co close very rapidly when the water quality changes. And so this team of, uh, of uh, scientists have placed a little sensor on the clam shells uh, to detect uh, when they're closing and when there might be a, a, a safety issue with the water. Uh, these clams every um, uh, three months, I think, are released um, uh, and replaced by new clams that would help uh, monitor the water. It is also the um, um, intelligence of a JECO uh, that allows the uh, allowed um, space engineer to find a solution to um, uh, glue objects in space. You can't glue objects in space because there is no atmosphere and so uh, objects don't stick, the glue doesn't dry. Uh, and it was discovered that the hands of Jekos are structured in a fractal uh, fashion, meaning that it's a structure in a structure in a structure until uh, this tiny structure exposes the uh, atoms to the air. And so Jekos and lizards generally are sticking to walls uh, uh, using atomic force. Um, and this is how uh, 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 NASA, the paper is actually available on the NASA website, uh, was able to find a solution to glue objects in space. Um, oops, sorry. 
And so the Latin origin of the word, uh, of the word uh, inventing uh, confirms that inventing consists in listening. Uh, invenire uh, means to find, to meet. And so it's a little bit like uh, meeting a friend on the way to school or noticing a clue on the ground uh, when you're walking in the forest. Um, maybe, for example, a banana on the ground. Oop. A banana, um, and I would like to remember, a fruit uh, with which we share 60% of our genes, like with all plants, like with the plants I have behind me. Oop. <laughs> And so it's not really longer time for bioplagiarism, uh, which is to say to plunder the planet resources and to boast uh, about uh, being more intelligent than other species. Uh, the time has come to listen to the living world. Uh, it's time for biomimicry, for bio cover songs. Uh, uh, similarly, I think to the way musicians uh, will reinterpret a song to honor it and to uh, keep it alive. So I would like to show you a second uh, installation that I created in 2020, and it's called Species Counterpoint. Um, and it was inspired by the fact that I just mentioned that we are 60% genetically identical to uh, to plants. Um, our gene speak of the relationship that we have with plants and that too often we forget that we were once uh, one and unique being. And I like this quote by uh, philosopher uh, Emmanuel Ecocha, who was um, uh, today already uh, mentioned. All living beings are in some way, the same body, the same life, the same eye, which never ceases to pass from form to form, from individual to individual, and from existence to existence. And so I wanted to create a piece that invites us to listen to this forgotten story. I wanted to create a piece that celebrates and invites audiences to meditate on our relationship to plants. Um, and so to tell you a little bit about how it works, Species Counterpoint is a mechanical piano. It's an old instrument from the 19th century, uh, which plays two melodies alongside. One side of the keyboard plays a uh, translation into musical notes of plant DNA. And on the right side of the keyboard of the piano, it plays human uh, DNA. Uh, DNA is made of four letters, uh, ATGC, uh, that are also called nucleotides. And so I coded a simple software that uh, maps these letters onto notes, uh, MIDI notes, <laughs> and um, then uh, that can give instructions to a machine to perforate uh, a paper roll, which is what the instrument is using uh, to move on its own. Uh, let me show you a little bit how it looks. <laughs> Something that stayed with me uh, when I did this installation that I didn't expect at the beginning of the project um, is uh, the variety, the diversity of uh, living beings that this instrument is made of. Uh, you have ivory for the white keys. Uh, there is ebony for the black keys. In total, about seven different species of uh, plants that make it. You also have animal skins uh, like deer or rabbits or cow that you saw for the little mechanism of the piano. You also have insects that were crushed uh, to make the varnish of the instrument. Um, and so, in a way, this instrument is a reminder of the interdependency between music and ecology. The example I gave is from a very materialistic point of view. Um, it shows that music would be technically impossible without this diversity of uh, living being or material. Uh, but I think it's also and mainly a reminder that music would have been probably unimaginable for humans uh, without, for example, gravity uh, that creates a sound uh, when they crash ocean waves, 
uh, without the wind playing with the uh, leaf of trees or without birds uh, imagining melodies first. And so this is a, a quote from a philosopher, a Belgian philosopher, Vincent Després, from a piece called Phonocene, um, about this origin of, of music. I think that uh, when singing was born, the rain falling, the waterfalls, the rivers, and the waves of the sea, the rumbling of the earth. Then the wind joined in, every reed, every stem, every branch became flutes, organs, oboes, and horns. The earth became singing, the world acquire its being melodic. And so now I'd like to explain a bit uh, how I went from aquariums to music and to science and to eventually uh, work as an artist. Um, what attracts me in music, I don't know about you, but it's um, the fact that it allows to experience very intangible things, unattainable things in very tangible ways. Uh, for me, I think even more than a uh, black hole, the mystery of what music is really is it remains complete, completely and total for me. I, it's hard for me to understand how it can be so tangible, a physical sensation, and yet very abstract at the same time, completely abstract. And so I started studying science because I wanted to understand the, the functioning of a musical instrument, acoustic electromagnetism, uh, and at the same time, one not some of the ways that the universe uh, works. Science, it's capable of revealing uh, to us amazing things like uh, sound waves or black holes or uh, perhaps touch other forms of intelligence. But these discoveries, they're always taught to us in very intellectual uh, means, right? Through scientific publications, through press articles or conferences. And unlike music, science is not taught by singing or it's not celebrated uh, uh, by dancing when you would, for example, discover a star. Uh, and we do not organize, I don't know, minutes of silence uh, in, in dedicated to the species that may have disappeared under the pressure of uh, 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 humans on their environment. And uh, by the way, I calculated that at the minimum, it would represent 200 of, uh, minutes of silence per year if we were observing these minutes of silence for beings that are uh, currently disappearing. Um, and actually that inspired me a little uh, a mini ritual that we could perform together today. Uh, this bird um, is called the ivory-billed woodpecker, and it's a bird that went extinct uh, this year. And if you accept it, I would like that we observe a minute of silence uh, for uh, this bird uh, right now. So I will play um, one last time the sound of the um, ivory-billed woodpecker, and then. Uh, if you'd like to observe a minute of silence, uh, we can close our eyes and, and think about it. Thank you. And so in order to get through the climate crisis, it, it seems to me that science um, also must become a sensory experience, a social, a ritual experience uh, to go anywhere. Aquariums or zoos or botanical gardens, whether you like them or not, uh, they allow us to appreciate collection of animals or plants, uh, minerals. Um, 
but you know i've been wondering do they really allow us to connect uh, to the living world around us is archiving and exhibiting uh, the disappearing disappearing world around us enough to preserve it probably not and so what do we do now and yes i believe that art uh, but in particular hybrid practices multi multidisciplinary approaches digital practices uh, have some of the ingredients that uh, could allow us to move minds a little bit and sculpt new interspecies uh, relationship um, this is a, a third piece i wanted to show you today uh, it's an installation called conversation metabolites so metabolite conversation simply it's a sculptural audio meditation on the subject of the language and intelligence of uh, phytoplankton, phytoplanktonic beings, uh, uh, that I created uh, uh, this year in 2022. Uh, and so during a, a residency with the uh, Fondation uh, Tara Ocean that was uh, mentioned earlier, uh, in the South Atlantic Ocean, uh, I learned that one breath out of two uh, that we take is produced by microalgae uh, that uh, eat sunlight, uh, and they produce 60% of the oxygen uh, of our atmosphere. So it's uh, actually more than terrestrial forest. And so these invisible beings, they form spectacular events called uh, blooms uh, that som uh, sometimes are cont continental size. The image that you're seeing now is the size of, of uh, Europe. Uh, and so they're visible uh, from space. And the crazy uh, thing is that uh, during these events, Plankton speaks. And so on board uh, Tara, this is an image of the boat, uh, we drifted for 23 days on a Cocolitophore bloom. Um, and um, the boat collected data at different depths about uh, including uh, metabolites, which are small molecules, uh, which are the chemical words of plankton. This is the, the word they use co to communicate. This is an image of a coccolithophore. They have an amazing uh, morphology. And so scientists like uh, uh, Connie Kulish or Flora Vincent, uh, who I collaborated with on the project, they have identified uh, uh, 1,700 of these words, and they currently work on, uh, work on mapping and deciphering uh, what the plankton is talking about. During the expedition, I wondered how, through their floating poetry, um, the plankton may uh, describe uh, the oscillation of the sun on their skin, or the rhythm of the moon in their minds, or the geometry of stars in their imagination. And so I spent time filming the reflection of sunlight on the surface of the ocean uh, in slow motion, uh, in hopes of perhaps experiencing a little bit of the code or the language that's hiding between the, the resonance between sun, waves, and plankton. And so these oscillation between uh, light and no light, uh, one and zeros. They've eventually found their place in this uh, puddle-shaped uh, reflective surface in the installation and became kind of the central element of the, of the work. In the installation, you can hear a composition uh, that weaves together hydrophone recordings uh, with sonification of metabolite concentration. Uh, as they evo evolve during the, the, this extraordinary event that is a boom. And so there's a 23-minute composition for 23 days of data uh, for an opportunity to eavesdrop on the, what the plankton uh, might be saying. And so sounds are beamed on the frosted glass through an ultra-directional speaker that you will see in a minute. Um, and so the sound reflects in the surface to immerse the listener in a, in a sound bubble uh, around the object. And so I'd like to see this work as an attempt of a artistic uh, led scientific rituals uh, to invite visitors to enter the, in the presence of these invisible beings that float all around us and that allow us every day to, to breathe. And so these meta-languages, these artistically orchestrated uh, scientific rituals, um, they're made possible um, by a decompartmentalization uh, between discipline that's partly, I think, is specific to digital culture. 
when I was on board Tara, the scientists, uh, they're using the same alphabet that I'm using uh, in creating artwork. They're using one and zeros. And today, data is everywhere in science or in arts. Uh, and it's a common language uh, that we can use for conversations. Um, but I think probably new kinds of cooperations uh, between artists and scientists uh, that can work together, yes, on exploring the world, but also on creating a new relationship with it and to preserve it. And so uh, I think these collaborations are about listening to the living world. Uh, it's about giving a voice to others than ourselves in the noisy, the, the noisy world that we've uh, uh, created. And so I used to th think of um, listening as the act of absorbing sound, uh, of, for example, staying silent uh, in front of an aquarium for hours. Uh, in fact, a lot of field recording is based on this idea that the recordist may be somewhat absent of the scene or that their presence would have no effect on what's around them. So this is a video I shot during uh, my first residency, artistic residency, uh, with Forestry Commission England. Um, and then I realized that listening also had to do with being absorbed, and not just absorbing, but being absorbed, uh, tolerated, uh, perhaps accepted by the ecosystem that you are in. I love an example that uh, gives uh, um, philosopher ba uh, Baptiste Morisot in his book uh, entitled Tracking Mythical Creatures, where he describes how to be able to get closer to wild deer, a trick um, is to pick up a bit of grass on the floor and eat it in front of them uh, so that they'd realize that you too might be a vegetarian uh, and that they'd let you be around them. I run a show on ATS Radio uh, called Edge of the Forest, which uh, I invite you to, to explore. Um, and you will hear um, in the show that I always try to keep the presence of the recordist in the recordings. Um, today, I like to think of listening a little bit more like gardening. Uh, and this is the a train of thought that I, I would like to leave you with. Uh, we're currently renovating a site on an island uh, in Sicily with a group of artists and scientific friends, uh, working on the idea of a sustainable multidisciplinary listening studio. Currently, the site is covered mainly in thorns, uh, and they have been there for perhaps 20 years. Uh, and so I didn't like the idea of just coming and cutting them to clear, which is what a uh, human tends to do automatically. And so I asked a friend of mine who's a, a professional uh, flower grower uh, to tell me a little bit more about thorns. And she told me all sorts of amazing things, of course, um, but also that um, thorns grow so fast that they tend to um, um, take over a landscape and not, not allow other flowers to be seen. Um, and so therefore a gardener uh, is a little bit like a moderator of the garden where he would cut a little bit of the thorns to allow other flowers uh, to be seen. And so I like to think today similarly about my role as a, as a listening artist, uh, the role of a moderator between disciplines um, and uh, perhaps between species, between human and other species. Uh, and this idea that art uh, can, can be working on strategies for these different voices to be heard. Uh, in this noisy uh, uh, um, human world. Today, audio data combined with uh, machine learning, for example, allow us to dream about uh, one day starting to understand the languages of other living beings, uh, despite our limitations and bias uh, as a human. Um, the work of Earth Species Project, if you haven't heard about them, is, a, is an example of such research. I invite you to look into it. Um, and so until we digital technology can help us reconnect uh, uh, with our different selves, can be one of the ways that we try to reconnect with our different selves. Um, I think worshiping biodiversity uh, seems essential if we hope to uh, maybe one day discuss about music with clams 
or perhaps work on exploring Mars with uh, uh, Jaco, uh, or listen to a talk given by a micro LG instead of instead of me if they are available on that day. And so I will finish with a, a short video um, of this uh, listening-driven uh, lab, uh, to which I hope I can uh, all invite you to work uh, collectively on sculpting these new relationship uh, with living beings around us. Um, So uh, thank you very much for listening. Apologies again for the uh, technical problems at the beginning. And um, uh, yeah, looking forward to, to chat together. Thank you very much. So immediately uh, inviting uh, Ishikura-san, Antoine-san, we are going to start a dialogue session. Uh, both of you, thank you so much for your very variable talk. Ishikura-san, I just decided to uh, give a comment to Ishikura-san, but hearing both of you, I thought anthropology and art and science and the mythology, you are connecting that and the intermediate then to generate and practice uh, experimental method. Thank you so much. Thank you. So the things uh, around me and how we see things, you know, the, our perspective to see the world is expanded. So I have a question. So I have a question for Ishikura-san. So mythology, you know, has a possibility of story carrying, and I'd like to see the possibility of the story telling in mythology, using mythology. So um, Ishikura-san, you said about the ecological circulation and, uh, you know, uh, you said the uh, mythology works in the intermediator between mythology and the world. So what is the origin of the mythology so that people can connect story, people can generate the storytelling? Do you have any idea of the, how people study the storytelling uh, of the mythology? Thank you very much. Uh, you know, uh, I you know, listen to Antoine's uh, experiments and practices, and I felt, you know, maybe he had the same kind of uh, uh, perspective as the original maker of the mythology. And currently, current artist has a science. And actually, mythology has a lot of uh, uh, seed of the science there. You know, uh, we, uh, mythology explain why sun arise and why uh, how the night comes, why human being uh, stand in two feet and walk, while other animal walk four legs and foot. So those are the tangible results we can observe, and we need uh, some narrative to explain why it is like that. And uh, uh, how the world, why world is like this? You know, a narrative answer is a mythology. So it's a fiction, of course. And uh, 
and uh, people started to explain the world using those. I think that's the beginning of the storytelling of the mythology. There are people who made a mythology in the beginning. If they have some uh, very uh, super sensors and some uh, musical instrument to express that, they may end up uh, this, this explanation of the reality world into music. But at, at that time, they have a narrative at their hand. So then we that lead me to the question, what is a narrative? What is a story? And I think story has two possibilities. One is a deceit people through fiction, in a way, fool people to en encroach us in a one world. That is a power possibility of narration. For nation have a mythology and they uh, disempower people. That's happened in many countries in the world. And uh, there's another uh, uh, possibility of storytelling mythology. Uh, that is what a uh, current artist is doing, that is create different reality. There's a primary possibility, primary story. And uh, we can create a uh, uh, different reality that is uh, a possibility of mythologies and narratives. And it has a strong uh, connection with uh, uh, artist. Thank you so much. Very interesting perspective. So in, and you also said in the uh, mythology, mythology includes a lot of seed of the science. And so as you say right now, mythology, narrative, storytelling can create a new reality. And also it has the ability to confine ourselves in a certain story, certain kind of uh, world reality. So next question is for two, uh, two of you. So, you know, what is among what Ishikurasa said, you introduce a word of Revy Strauss, Claude Revy Strauss. So, uh, mythology is, uh, is uh, belong, happens, a story uh, created when a human being is not separated with animals. Now, modernization happens. Uh, it's a long time ago, right? So, our current life is is separated from other uh, beings, other tools. Our reality is different from the era where mythology was made. I'm wondering, uh, maybe in the uh, in the ancient days, people can go and come back and go and come back from the other world, like a uh, animal world. So, Ishikawa-san, uh, I think you have a new. Uh, project and Antoine, you have a project, spectral project through uh, sound. You express uh, mythology in your sound. Uh, so, you know, compared to the ancient years, you know, we are, are separated from the world or other beings or animals. So, and in this era, so what? Do you pay attention to as a minta intermediary in this modern age, which we human being is so much separated from the reality or animals and other being? Yeah, either of you can start. May I start? Yeah. So what I pay attention to is. Uh, also, I think what I felt through Antoine's presentation, so uh, recapture the world through my physical body, not as a body, my own body, through my body, think the world through my body, or understanding newly the world through my body. And I, Antoine's work is uh, really a kind of meditation. It's a deep speculation of the world and the open up of a subconsciousness, open us to the something non-human being like a crumbs or a banana or uh, uh, different plants, maybe a virus like a COVID, 
or translate what they are telling. So there's a very two important aspect. One is going back to our own body and do speculation or meditation. So it's like uh, reconfirm our own body and start from there. The other aspect is uh, mediation, intermediary, right? Kata. So we are losing a lot of uh, med uh, in mediations. For example, we have a smartphone, we have a PC. We are confined in the symbols and codes. And uh, Antoine's slide shows a uh, uh, kind of logo of the companies. Everybody knows that. But uh, our real plant, we don't know them. We lost those mediations. So we want to uh, recreate, uh, re, uh, uh, recover our ability to connect to the real things. I think we need that kind of meditation. And uh, we need to uh, mediation, recover mediation to open ourselves. Those are the things we have been lost. So I think we want to recover these two abilities. What do you think, Antoine? Yeah, I mean, in terms of what to pay attention to. So as I was saying, I, I, I guess I evolved in a scientific context. It's a little bit what I studied a little bit. I'm not a scientist. Um, but uh, you can see, obviously, the there's an interesting element in science, which is that it, it seems to progress objectively, although in practice is really uh, not true. You know, it's made of scientists that also have opinions and things that they allow themselves to think and, and not. Um, and I think in particular, in relationship to the, the, the living world, we have a lot of bias. Uh, we think the living world is not uh, um, intelligent or even they can't speak or uh, that we are just now discovering all these things and that nothing was known before. Um, and so I think at the minimum to, to change these lines and so for, for science to progress, but I think more importantly for our relationship with what's around us, uh, who's around us to to evolve in, in an interesting direction. We, we need fiction uh, to move these lines. Uh, and I think, um, uh, um, yeah, uh, fic fiction is a material through which we we progress. And, and, and so for me, listening has been this, this answer um, to that. I think listening is an active process of trying to look for this fiction, not just uh, intellectually, but also in what we have in our bodies. We know that our bodies are made of uh, millions and millions of years of evolution, and they are made of all these beings that we have around us, uh, that you know we've, we've taken, we have different bodies, but we were once the same body. Um, and I think uh, these fictions, as uh, Professor uh, uh, Toshiaki Shikura was saying, they're not just uh, intellectual they are uh, in the intelligence of our hands of our bodies and 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 this is something we need to explore and i think yeah fiction and embodied fiction is a way to um, progress through this so so yeah i think um, what i'm trying to pay attention to is is listening as this uh, very physical activity and 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 what ideas can emerge from this uh, perhaps by uh, what other living beings are are suggesting or telling us and not just ourselves. Sorry, I was on mute. So listening to Antoine made me think about listening, how to face the act of listening. I believe he mentioned that. So the act of listening or listening to Deepening that concept was also mentioned in his presentation. So the act of listening, I think, is connected to 
the um, co-heterogeneity or co-different body that Ishigura-san um, presented earlier. So when he was talking about co-heterogeneity or co-different body, he said that we ourselves are made up of multi-layers of things. So instead of summarizing them all as one, we have to see a chunk um, that's actually comprised of, of multi-layers. So the difference or the conf conf conflicts between uh, human beings that structure uh, looks like that's looped or cycled or going in circles. So we have to destroy that and that would uh, that should benefit in resolving these um, issues that we're facing right now. Yes, talking about uh, co-heterogeneity, the idea of that has a concept of multi-world or multi-layered multi world. For example, the word listen doesn't just imply sound in Japanese, but also smell. We listen to smell as well in Japanese. That's how we say it. So that is multi-sensory uh, matter. We listen to music in a concert hall. We look at pictures at an uh, art museum. So auditory uh, sense and um, visual sense are separated. And we're used to that, used to that culture of separating those senses. However, I think in this century, multi-sensory, the concept of that is very important. How to recover uh, the body that's multi-sensory, that is very important to think about. And the other important aspect is the multi-species. Within the human community, we don't live um, not only in the human community, because in order to feel the gravity, we had to have the cooperation of an apple to explain that. So we are collaborating with other beings and we feel together, we dance together, we converse with each other. And then we have developed that way. So we are living in multi-species world. And the th uh, third one is a multi-site. Um, we are connecting Japan and Europe and the world right now. We are gathering together here online, but connecting the world in doing so. So we have to be aware that multi-places, uh, multi multiple places are contained in one place. Because there are multiple places or multiple things, we can rely on each other and we can create narratives and stories together. Multi-species, multi-locations, those multi-ness we have to recover. That is one important issue that we have to tackle. Um, yeah, good. should I go a bit? Uh, so, yeah, about, about listening, I think um, I think for me, what's interesting, um, and as as uh, Prof Professor Chiaki Shikola just said, it's not just about the ear. Uh, it's also about uh, uh, scent. It's also it listening can be this multisensory um, practice. For for me, it's it's the it's the starting point. It's the attitude that uh, to say the living beings around us are. Uh, very intelligent and they communicate and they think about the world in ways that are uh, very, very different than ourselves, but not less, probably more. And, and for me, this is what's listening in this sort of non, non sonic way. But I think what's interesting also that's happening uh, a little bit today through technology, <laughs> some of the technology is that um, for the example I gave at the end of the talk of uh, machine learning allowing us to uh, perhaps look at uh, animal communication and finding patterns and way to look at it that are a little bit removed from our own way of communicating allow us to realize that they are talking a lot more uh, than than uh, science culturally allows itself to think 
And I think this is interesting that, you know, we, we often feel that we are in a very visual culture, um, perhaps, um, but an anthropologist could probably know more about this. It hasn't always been the case, you know, I think probably since the invention of printing and, uh, you know, archiving knowledge in very visual ways, we became a bit more visuals. But before that, you know, we used to have very uh, a, a powerful uh, memotechnic systems that you find, for example, in, I don't know, uh, Aborig Aboriginal culture in Australia of song lines, you know, of archiving knowledge into songs, etc. Uh, and we were probably mo much more sonic. So I think when you go back to listening also in this very sonic way, when you listen, when you hear, you probably tap into also some of the knowledge, whether it's within humans or within other uh, being an, an animal or plants communities um, that were shared maybe <laughs> a bit in earlier times, you know. Um, so that's why also I'm interested in listening, you know, as something that has to do with sound, you know. And sound is so much more than human just experience. We have a small range and we have to remember that, you know, the range is very, very vast. Thank you so much for uh, listening to you too. I feel like I'd like to uh, focus on my own sensory, like a three um, dimensional myself and others in the other place and uh, also the uh, sonic as Antoine said that not just listening but catching from the other things or the intelligence belong to the um, the materials and things and then including the stories uh, within and tomorrow the session that we also tomorrow's session that we would like to listen also listening but we have the opportunity to have the uh, meditating um, experience connecting to our physical body which we are losing in a busy world so that is a kind of the inspiration that I get from you. Um, we can keep going, but we'd like to close our session. If you have a question from the audience, please um, ask Shikura-san and Antoine-san later. So please write your comments down in the chat box so we can follow later thank you so much for your very very precious talks thank you so thank much you. To, to you too thank you very inspiring thank you for uh, joining <laughs> us uh, anton and uh, giving us uh, in incredible talks thank you yeah uh, i uh... Ishikura-san, Antoine, and Saki, thank you so much. Uh, which one of you probably feel uh, different things uh, inspired by all these talks? And we had two sessions. How, how was that? And there are so many inspirations, so many things that are new information. It's like a showering in the new worlds or the different thought, or uh, you have um, sensed 